Starting soon, the Monday Market Highlights podcast will be exclusively available on Milford's new podcast channel called On Track with Milford. Search On Track with Milford on your podcast app and tap subscribe so you don't miss out on any episodes. You're listening to the Monday Market Highlights brought to you by Milford. morning. It's Monday the 5th of June and I'm Will from Milford. Global share markets posted solid gains again last week, led by mega cap US tech stocks. Market breadth, a measure that looks at the number of stocks in an index that are rising versus falling, is at record lows. Simply, this means that a very small number of stocks are driving all of the rise in the headline index. In the US, the leading tech favourites, Microsoft, Apple, Alphabet Meta, Amazon, Tesla and NVIDIA are up a whopping 52% year to date, compared to the S&P 500 which is only up 10%. More interestingly, when you take these 7 stocks out of the S&P 500 and look at the returns of the remaining 493 stocks in the benchmark, their combined year to date return is almost flat. Further to this, when we look at the market cap of the 5 largest stocks in the S&P 500 as a share of the total index, at 23% it is close to the highs of the last 45 years. Historically, poor market breadth is often followed by weak index performance as the rally has been driven by a small number of stocks, making it vulnerable. However, that isn't a given. Turning to Australia, we had a number of key pieces of economic data out last week that will influence what the RBA does at their June board meeting tomorrow. Early in the week, we had the April monthly CPI, which came in hot, surprising to the upside at 6.8% versus a market expectation of 6.4%. While some of this was due to cycling a previously weak period in which fuel price excise tax was temporarily removed, there are some areas that will continue to concern the central bank. Rents in particular continue to surge, currently running at 6% annually, however these are likely to continue moving higher as rent increases take time to flow through the CPI data, compared to other higher frequency data that shows much larger increases, particularly in the capital cities. The other key piece of data was the Fair Work Commission's annual decision on the minimum and award wages for the year ahead. Both the award wage and minimum wage increased by 5.75%, generally in line with what most economists were expecting. This decision walks a fine line between providing a large portion of workers with a wage rise that looks somewhat close to inflation levels, while trying not to send the Australian economy into a wage price spiral. Overall, this decision seems slightly higher than what the RBA may have had in their forecasts, but we'll need to wait till tomorrow to see if we get any further colour from the bank. In the US, developments around a resolution to the US debt ceiling kept markets focused last week. Early in the week, House Speaker Kevin McCarthy and President Joe Biden reached an agreement to suspend the debt ceiling until 2025 in exchange for cuts to non-defence spending. This deal avoids any changes to major programs such as Medicare or Social Security and instead focuses on discretionary spending including clawing back unspent COVID funds. Overall, the deal ended up being reached with little market turmoil as it was passed by both houses late in the week. This debt deal means that the issue of a further and potentially longer term raise will be soon after the US presidential election in 2024. Focus for the market will now switch to the inevitable issuance of US debt and rebuild of the Treasury General account which has the potential to drain significant liquidity from the financial system. In stock news last week, university testing and placement provider IDP Education sold off sharply on Monday after Canadian authorities said that they would accept university entrance tests from other testing providers. IELTS, which is the testing arm of IDP, contributed nearly half of their gross profit in the first half of 2023, coupled with Canada being a significant market, which saw the stock fall 16% on the day. New Zealand electricity gen tailor Contact Energy held their Investor Day last week, reaffirming EBITDA guidance of $530 million for this year. Contact continues to be of significant interest for investors and customers as the majority of their power comes from renewable sources. On the day, they announced a new wind project in Southland, along with a power deal with Microsoft. Bank of Queensland was slapped with an enforceable undertaking by regulator Austrac, after it was found that they had significant gaps in their risk management framework. This undertaking requires BOQ to hold an additional $50 million of capital until such time that the regulator is satisfied that they have a plan in place to remedy the gaps. Investors didn't like this news, pushing the stock down over 5% on Wednesday. 
This week, the data front is generally quiet. The key focus will be the RBA meeting tomorrow afternoon, with the market finally balanced between a hike and a pause. Late last week, post the wages outcome, a number of economists moved to call for a hike tomorrow, coupled with a higher terminal rate. The market remains on the fence, however, with under half a hike priced. Thanks for listening. Have a good week. Don't forget, this podcast is moving to Milford's new podcast channel. Search On Track with Milford on your podcast app and tap subscribe so you don't miss out.